Hello, this is Sam Gerrans from samgerrans.com. Today is Wednesday, July the 19th, 2023. And today the subject is totalitarian regimes have no sense of humour. And uh, we're going to look again at a, an article and just pick it apart. I haven't looked at this article yet. Uh, it's hard enough reading them once. Uh, don't want to read them twice. But I have a, a basic idea what it's about. And it's today's victim, if you want to call it that, is from the Independent. Yes, Independent. That's what it's called itself. Anyway, here we go. Uncle Roger, comedian, has popular Chinese social media account shut down over video mocking Beijing. Beijing. Cancellation of London-based character comedian's account comes amid debate in China over future of stand-up. Here we are. Here's the comedian. And uh, I don't know if that's uh, on purpose. His microphone matches his shirt. I have to assume that it was. So what we're going to do is we're going to read this and uh, sort of pick it apart and see what the, the propaganda quotient is, because everything is propaganda. And in this part of my presentation, all I'm trying to do is just basically bring you up to speed with what any intelligent person in the Soviet Union understood. That there's, as I've said before, there were two main newspapers, one called Izvestia, or Pravda was the first one, like, Pravda means truth, and izvestia means news. And the joke was there's no truth in the news and there's no news in the truth. And you really do need to get to that point uh, to understand the propaganda that, that's being directed at you. And it's, uh, as I've said before, it's nothing to do with trying to wake people up. People won't wake up. Most, most not only uh, can't, but they won't. They won't. They like propaganda and you need propaganda to live under the kind of existential pain which is modernity you do need a, a, a soporific and uh, some sort of um something to uh, alleviate the pain and and part of that is is propaganda it's, just, it's, just, it's a religion it's delusion and most people like it and that's all fine so i'm not here for them i'm just trying to show you how to approach this see for me i have background in this um so a bit like in the matrix i don't even see the ones and zeros anymore i just look for the propaganda um, payload and it's all about manipulating you I mean we're, we're currently living through the, the war in Ukraine um, because of Russia's illegal and unprovoked uh, attack on Ukraine nothing of course about NATO's illegal and unprovoked expansion over 30 years towards the borders of Russia no 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 you're you know you're there suffering for Ukraine in fact you're in t if you live in the west your economies are being collapsed and all you've all you've got left is uh, this feeling of uh, quivering self-righteousness that you're standing firm with Ukraine. Yes, standing with Nazis. Wonderful, isn't it? I'm not here to invade against Nazism or Ukrainians or any of that. I'm just saying that your minds aren't your own and I'm just going, we're going to have a little look at one little piece of why that is. So, London-based comedian Nigel Ngun has been banned from Chinese social media platforms after he published a video mocking China's tough policies on issues ranging from surveillance to Taiwan just so you, you know I'm sure you've worked it out but um, they're winding you up for another war when they're finished with this war which is most wars are actually against you the, the interesting thing about wars is you can get much more done uh, in terms of social engineering during war because people will put up with a lot more oppression of themselves because if they feel there's an external threat so once they once they're finished with the ukrainian project when they finished destroying ukraine and uh brought, started the process of deindustrializing you lot then they're going to move on to to taiwan and i'm not here to you know protect china or russia it's all the same nonsense as far as i'm concerned i'm just saying that this is a chessboard and you don't count i don't count none of us count so why pretend that you do? You don't, you see. But anyway, they're setting you up. They're sort of doing some uh, sort of background propaganda for Taiwan, which is going to be another another war. And that will be another justification for you to get hungrier and colder. But you'll be able to stand firm with Taiwan and uh, all the rest of it. My view, just for what it's worth, my view is that the, the um, what they're calling the fair world order which people who for years understood that the the, wealth, uh, the World Economic Forum, the WEF, I call it the WTF, but the WEF 
and uh, George Soros and uh, whoever's the other, uh, Klaus Schwab and all these people, Bill Gates. These are evil, terrible people. And they are, and I'm sure they are. Uh, but that they were against this and they could understand that, that this was evil and sounding the alarm, Paul Revere, you know, the British are coming. Um, but now they've embraced the, the fair world order uncritically and completely without really giving it any thought whatsoever. It's amazing, isn't it? But my view for what it's worth is just one big chessboard. And the plan, in my view, could be wrong. Could be wrong. But as it looks to me, is to break you lot down. And the way the elites actually work is if they want to, if they want to uh, amalgamate, if they want to combine something, they have a war first. That's what they do. Uh, the way you and I think is the way we're, we're educated in, in, in what they laughingly call schools is we think A, B, C, D. You know, there's this sort of sequential event that has to happen. The the ruling elites still think, you know, sort of three dimensionally. I'm not saying they're all supermen or anything because they're not. But um, what they can't do themselves, they can hire in. They've got the, the resources to do that. Anyway, that's just my view. Anyway, we'll just uh, have a look. Yes, Taiwan, that was the point. They're going to, they're getting ready for another war. You can't finish the one you've started, but apparently you need another one. Malaysia born Ng, who was best known for his ca character Uncle Roger and has more than 7.7 .7 million subscribers on YouTube, was suspended from the Twitter like Chinese platform Weibo, where his account had accumulated 400,000 followers. Now, yes, evil um, isn't it terrible. Uh, censorship, shutting people down, deplatforming them. Hmm, who does that remind me of? Oh, it reminds me of the West. Yes, he does this all day long. Uh, but it does does it to people that you can agree that you don't like. But because this this guy's got a sort of Asiatic looking face, then whatever he's doing must be must be must be good, right? Um, but if your name is Alex Jones or I don't know, David Icke or you know whoever it is. They're terrible conspiracy theorists. You can shut them down. I don't know if you've noticed, but since the West has become Marxist, which is it is, this is Marxism 2.0 that you're living through. Um, Marxism 1.0 could only work up to a certain point. Uh, this new type of Marxism is um, Frankfurt School Marxism, and it's based around you. It's based around your ego. It's based around um, your identity politics, how you feel about yourself. Because what they discovered is is that the uh, the working class get bored once they've once they've got a, as I've said many times a packet of Pringles and a plasma screen and a six pack of beer, they can care less about the workers of the world. So what they do is they've developed this new type of Marxism, which is sort of new and improved, sort of monosodium glutamate um, Marxism, which is uh, which uses women to destroy their families, uses uh, sodomites to you know, spread their disease around the place. I mean, psychological disease, um, pushing uh, deviancy upon your children, all of this, all of this is, is essentially, if you're looking for the common denominator, it's a form of Marxism, okay? All that to say, it has no sense of humour, can't have one. The sense of humour is actually a, a very potent weapon, but it, it doesn't have a sense of humour at all, and it deplatforms people all the time. Even Rowan Atkinson, I'm not a huge fan, although he's an excellent driver, if you've ever seen him drive. And he's an intelligent man. Uh, definitely give him that. Uh, he's spoken out against this because he realises that you know, the, bread on his, the butter on his bread is being, <laughs> is being removed before his eyes. Uh, because if you can't mock things, he can't make a living. And what you'll notice about this, um, what I call libtardism, is it has no sense of humour whatsoever. None. Zero. And uh, if you if you watch leftist comedians, um, they're just not funny, because the I suppose the reason is is because there are two things about that make humour work. Firstly, it has to be essentially true, and their philosophy is essentially a lie, so they they fall at that hurdle. And the second thing about humour, which makes it work, is that it has to wrong foot you somehow on 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 a point of truth. Well, if you have no point of truth then how can you be wrong-footed uh, it, it can just all it can do is sort of turn the volume up appeal to some sort of um, righteous indignation predicated on its own philosophy and that gets very tiring and boring and strained and uh, you're almost um, doing them a favor i suppose by clapping anyway just on the point there is a 
there is a channel called Comedy Unleashed, which is based in the UK, which has conservative, I know, conservative comedians. Uh, look it up on YouTube. I won't link to it below, but look it up. Comedy Unleashed. And I've watched a few of them. Some of them are really funny. Uh, I mean, genuinely funny. And you can just, you can see the difference. Anyway, let's get on with this person. His account was, quote, currently in a state of being muted due to a violation of relevant laws and regulations, according to the message on the page. His homepage on the Chinese video site Billy Billy was also placed, quote, under suspension, the Strait Times reported. The ban comes amid the Chinese government's ongoing crackdown on stand-up comedy. Now, I'm not here to defend the Chinese government. I can care less about them. They're atheistic materialists, just like everybody else. Um, so I have no investment in them whatsoever. However, I will just say, what's the word they used? Ongoing crackdown on stand-up comedy. What do you think you've been living through in the West since the 19, late 1980s? I mean, you don't use the word crackdown, you don't use the word government, but you're living under a, under a regime that doesn't tolerate real humour at all. Uh, and not only that, you can get sidelined, if not banned, if not, if not fired from your place of work, if you tell an off-colour, what's considered an off-colour joke. More than that, you've got this sort of revisionism that goes back, so that your, your history can be reinterpreted in, in the light of new and crazier and crazier standards. So a joke you may have made on Twitter uh, five years ago, which was perfectly acceptable, is now, now, now not acceptable, and you can be sort of retrospectively deplatformed, well, deplatformed now, but retrospectively on the basis of something you said then. All I'm saying to you is, is that you're living under a tyranny. The sooner you wake up to that, the better. The Chinese people probably don't think of themselves as living under a tyranny, just like the Russian, the Soviets didn't think of it in those terms, just like you don't think of it in those terms. Um, but, but you know, that just that really just is testament to how well you're managed, and that's really what um, the elites are in the business of, managing your mind, keeping you on the plantation, paying taxes and being obedient. And there is no difference between the Chinese system and your system, actually. OK, here we go. Um, the ban comes amid the Chinese government's ongoing crackdown on stand-up comedy, a form of entertainment that had managed to gain popularity with performances that just about towed the line when it came to censorship. Well, that's precisely what would happen in the West now. All I'm saying, it's, it's essentially one religion, OK? If you, you want to get into it more deeply, I highly recommend, as I have become a bit of a sort of I suppose a bit of a missionary for the work of uh, Jackie Lul. If you look up uh, his book, Propaganda, and go to the bottom of page 39, it'll summarise the, the four postulates that all these systems believe. There is no difference between the Chinese uh, Communist Party and what you've got in the West. And anyway, I mean, they're setting up China as the big bogeyman, the big next terrible big bogeyman. Who created China? All these big Western companies, the same Western companies... The same Western companies that um, are today standing with Ukraine or promoting sodomy as the new Coke or Pepsi lifestyle or promoting, you know, the destruction of your culture or promoting the um, sort of idiocy as education or whatever it is. And if you notice, none of them stand out. None of, none of them. They all basically work like a, like a school of fish. They all move in exactly the same, same direction, just as if they were all controlled by the same people. Yeah, as Alex Jones would say. As a conspiracy theorist would say. Anyway. Mm, last week, posted a trailer of his new stand-up show on Twitter where he jokes about China's surveillance and asks the Chinese Communist Party not to make, quote, make him disappear. What, what do you think you're living under? I'm not here to shock you. All I'm doing, really, in this part of my presentation is pointing out the blindingly obvious. Um, but that seems to be, as Orwell would have said, a revolutionary act. Anyway, let's get on with to see what more is left of this. In the video, Ng talks to a member of the audience who said they are from Ganzhou province in China. China, good country, good country, Ng responded. We have to say that now, correct? He asked before taking a jab at the Chinese government. I'll just sort of translate this into you know, across Central Asia, into Europe. Um, Ukraine, Ukraine, democratic values and, you know, freedom and whatever nonsense else that they're telling you. 
you have to say that. Try standing up for, try standing up for, you know, ex trying to explain Russia's position. Whether you agree with it, you don't agree with it, it doesn't really matter. See how long you last in the West as a business or as an individual or whatever. They're, what I'm trying to say is there's an orthodoxy. That orthodoxy is decided at the top. Your silly opinion has no relevance whatsoever. You either go along with your orthodoxy, just, you know, like in the Salem witch hunts or, you know, in the Matthew the witch finder and, um, or, or whatever it is. Um, but in the West, what you're, the difference is, is you're, what they've discovered is, is to allow you to feel like you have a choice is more efficient form of management of the idiots. You see, it's just how it works. A bit like uh, asking your 11-year-old daughter if she'd like to clear up her room. Now, there's an apparent choice there, isn't there? But we all know what the effect is going to be. That room is going to be cleared up. And you're asking her if she would like to is uh, just a sort of um, a social nicety, hiding the the actual fact. That's all. I'm not complaining against any of this. I'm not reading against any of this. I'm just saying that this kind of propaganda, what it's here to do is to allow you to think that you don't live in a tyranny, but you do. You've just been trained sufficiently not to notice it. Probably, probably. I mean, I understand that people watching this channel don't fall so much into that category, but but... The point of this is to keep you feeling free. Um, really good film to watch, as I've mentioned before, is B Brazil by Terry Gilliam. 1983, 84, something like that. Prophetic, prophetic film. They'll have you paying for your own interrogations, literally. Probably having to borrow money. All the phone listening, all the phone listening, he continues, referring to accusations of surveillance through popular high-tech firms like Huawei. This nephew got Huawei phone, they all listening. Um, Ng could do with a bit, of, you know, a bit of an upgrade on the grammar. But you th why do you think they gave you social media? I'm amazed people complaining about social media spying on you. What, what did you think was the point of it? You know, it's, it's not like it's for you, you're for it. Why isn't that obvious? All our phones tap into it. Long live President Xi, he said. Mm, then asked the audience if anyone was from Taiwan. Quote, not a real country, he said sarcastically. I hope one day you rejoin the motherland, one China. They're, they're getting you prepared. Not that it'll matter if you are really on board with it because you'll just go along with it as you did with everything else. Face nappies, 9-11, you know, weapons of mass destruction, destruction um, you know, the cow flu, bird flu, um, yeah, homosexuals are an oppressed, you know, sub subspecies or what, whatever it is, whatever the new thing, you'll go along with this as well. But they, they have to kind of dig the ground to prepare you. Um, because what they're going to do is make it, what they always do is make it socially unacceptable to express a dissenting opinion, just like in China. Let's see. Okay. Go write a good report for, oh no, we missed a bit. Uncle Roger going to get cancelled after tonight. Well, this is obviously hilarious comedy. Go write good report for Uncle Roger, he told his audience. Dear CCP, Uncle Roger, good comrade, good comrade, don't make him disappear, please, he quipped. Yeah, or, or you know, don't defund him or deplatform him. Or if you express the wrong opinion, lose your job and basically be conf you know, condemned to live on the streets, which is really what happens. If you don't believe that, I mean, there's a, there's a, I guess you'd call him a journalist. Can't Fred, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he works in the Donbass reporting. He's British. He, he speaks passable Russian. It's not very good, but it's enough to get by. Uh, it's not Patrick Lancaster. There's another chap. And Patrick Lancaster is American. There's a British chap, no hair, who he can get, he can get by. He can get his points across in sort of rustlish. Um, who reports on what's going on there. He's had his bank accounts frozen in, in the West, He's in, in England. I think they've taken his house away or something. There's a journalist, uh, and a German girl. She's uh, basically been made homeless and her parents, and they've had to come back and live in Russia. I'm not here saying Russia's perfect. Or I'm not even comparing, I'm not even contrasting them. I'm just saying you are living under a tyranny. And the... the the efficacy of that tyranny is should be measured by in terms of 
how little you notice it. Okay, this is the what propaganda is. This is all I'm pointing out. I'm not. I don't expect people to, walk, people to wake up. I don't expect there to be any change. I don't care about the masses. I'm not complaining about anything. I'm just it's like explaining how a water force that works to a four-year-old. That's all I'm doing. And and, and you're, you're sitting here watching this. You think, yeah, yeah, I get this, I get this. Of course you get it. It's really, really, really simple. It's there isn't This isn't rocket science. But people don't notice it. And once you start to notice it, all you have to do is sort of label. If you label the type of propaganda you're getting when you get it, and just say, oh, okay, that's background propaganda. Okay, that's setting me up for this. Okay, it's doing this, it's doing this. That's all I'm trying to help people to do. You won't be able to wake people up. People don't care. You can't save your families. You can't save the people you love. You, you, I, cannot undo a trillion dollars worth of mind control. Forget about it. I'm telling you now, you, 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 you'll think you can. You'll get into arguments with them. You'll try to help them. You're wasting your time. All you can do is improve yourself. They're already dead. All right, let's carry on. Ng's stand-up show is slated for release on 4 June, the anniversary. 4 June, you see, this is um, this is an Americanism. I guess, I guess that this was written um, by a CIA or, or similar kind of propaganda outlet. And you notice this quite a lot, is they don't even bother kind of making it more British. This is the, the whatever this, is it the Independent, is a, a British... Uh, or as the Americans say, British outlet. But you see these Americanisms come through, which says to me that this is boilerplate um, press release, which then a journalist, we don't have any journalists now, not in the traditional sense of the word, these propagandists, they just repurpose. I mean, you could use you could use AI to do this, thing, but it doesn't change the Americanisms, and you can spot it that way. Anyway, let's go through. On 4 June, which is not something we say in England, the anniversary of the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre of students and pro-democracy protesters. See, they've got you believing that democracy, which is a, a moving target, you don't really know what it is, but you believe it's good because it's really to do with the worship of the masses who are essentially stupid. And you know that. And you, I mean, you do. Just, just think, how many, how many really intelligent people have you met in your life? I hold that number, and now I think, how many crashingly stupid people have I met in my life? There you are. There's your answer. Um, it's not the first time that the 32-year-old comedian has faced the heat for comments on China. In 2021, Ng was criticised after he took down a video featuring popular food blogger and China critic YouTuber Mike Chen. Ng reportedly apologised at the time, saying the video had, quote, had made a bad social impact end quote. And he was not aware of Chen's, quote, political thoughts and incorrect comments about China in the past. Now, you, you can say exactly the same things about people in the West. You know, someone says, oh, well, you know, he's, he's, his views on women are this, or he's a misogynist, or he's, a, he's an anti-Semite, or he's a, I don't know, they've got some East, Ite, or Ob. Just look out for those three endings and that kind of name-calling and shaming language. That's what they do. It doesn't matter what area you're talking about, whether it's MGTOW or, you know, white replacement theory or whatever. They've just got some names to call you. They won't deal with facts. They can't deal with, with facts. And then there's guilt by association, all of these sorts of things. Being criticised. Yeah, this is now... He was criticised. Does it say by whom? On what basis? No, being criticised. Everyone's criticised. If you haven't been criticised, you haven't said anything. But none of that matters. Comedians in China are now worried about the government's increasing intolerance of stand-up comedy, which gained popularity during the COVID-19 pandemic. Last week, Chinese comedian Li Haoxi, who goes by the stage name House, was arrested after he poked fun at the military, comparing the People's Liberation Army to dogs chasing a squirrel. All right. Try, can, try lampooning the... Uh, pretense that female soldiers are equivalent to male soldiers. See how long you last. Wokeism in the army. You've got generals now in the West who are literally men in a dress. Come out against that and see how long you last. I'm just saying it's the same system. And what this is, is to make you feel that it isn't, that you live somewhere that's essentially righteous and good, but you don't. You live in a, 
a place that is, 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 has the same essential religion as the Chinese Communist Party. Essentially, it does. Um, it's just diffused in a slightly different way, that's all. In the joke, Lee recounted seeing two stray dogs. He had adopted Chase a squirrel and said that he reminded him of the phrase have a good work style, be able to fight and win battles. Well, you know, I have to say, it's side-splitting comedy, isn't it? The punchline is a slogan Chinese President Xi Jinping used in 2013 to praise the PLA's work ethic. The company that hired him for the event in Beijing was fined 14.7 million yuan, 1.7 million pounds. Quote, Stand-up comedy has been the last bastion in which people can still enjoy entertaining commentary about public life. Yes, I agree. And just look how it's been shut down in the West. They've come for all the the old northern style um, comedians, you know, telling their mother-in-law jokes or whatever it was. Us, that's right, that's uh, that's. Sexist or ist, eit or ob. Just look out for those three endings and if it's being used to shut you down, you know you're dealing with a slogan. And slogans are basically how how you manage morons, you see? Because they can't think and you shouldn't expect them to, so don't hold your breath. Stand-up comedy has been the last bastion in which people can still enjoy entertaining commentary about public life. Beijing-based independent political analyst Wu Yang told Reuters. After this, the space for stand-up comedy and public in expression in general will inevitably keep shrinking. Yeah, but you won't notice how it's already shrunk to almost nothing uh, where you live already. A number of shows had been cancelled in the wake of the incident, a Beijing-based comedian said on the condition of anonymity. OK, have we got any more of this, Tosh? Ah, uh, no. Chinese leadership fed an atmosphere of paranoia and fear over national security risks defined so expansively that anything can be an attack. That sound familiar? Um, about the Patriot Act? Anything can be an attack. Um, it's going back to the anti, anti-American behaviour, anti-American sentiments, you know, back in the McCarthy witch hunts. Although I have to say, McCarthy wasn't as wrong as uh, people like to say was. Anyway said David Bandorsky, director of the China, China Media Project, a US-backed research group. I don't know, but I'm willing to bet that that group is funded by the, uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, which is the CIA. That's precisely what it is. Um, could be wrong, but if you're interested, look it up. If you, if you do do that, please, please put it in the comments if you find out. With a link... Uh, my YouTube thing stops links, but if I see a link and check that it's the one and it is you know, correct, I'll, I'll click it through so, so people can see that. But um, what you find in a lot of this sort of New World Order versus Fair World Order presentation, which I see a lot of just because I'm sort of in that space to some extent, partly because I live in Russia, is this idea, this this implicit idea that China is and Russia and BRICS and you know these are all better than the West. My argument is they're not. They're exactly the same. While they're, the postulates of their religion are identical, and the difference between the West, this, this, this false dichotomy they've got going, is that uh, is, is about, as, about as big as the differences between two minor strains within Catholicism. It's the same religion, absolutely. Uh, f- Quote, a punchline is treated with the same alarm as a real assault on the nation. End quote. This is the end of it. Uh, words are violence. Look at exactly the same kind of rhetoric coming out of these George Soros funded social um, disease dissemination kind of groups. Uh, microaggressions, all of this stuff. All I'm trying to say is it's one thing. There is no difference. If you want, you know, if you actually want to do something, then you need to embrace your own life as something which for which you take responsibility. And uh, the way I do it is by seeing this life in terms of eternity. You're not going to be able to wake people up. It doesn't work that way. And just, you know, having lots of likes and subscribers and stuff isn't going to make any difference. If you really think about it kind of objectively, just on a bit of a different tack here. Um, I mean, the, the medieval concept of uh, 
of what in Arabic is called taqwa, of uh, God consciousness, of, of what I call in my translation prudent fear, the awareness of having an audience, essentially, of your, of your actions being valid on the basis of an outside observer, being you know, God and the angels, let's say, um, has, a, has a, a materialistic implementation today in terms of social media. Because people derive their value from the amount of people who are watching them. Their life actually becomes um, almost like a... Uh, almost, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's, it's something that's watched. It has, has value only insofar as other people are seeing it. But that, that's, it seems to me that's almost a parody of, of what was meant in, in the medieval years, of medieval times. Um, spectator sport, that's the word I was looking for. And it seems to me, I could be wrong, but my, my, my sense is that we have an inbuilt um, understanding of this, feeling for this. And what this system does is it, it takes that natural understanding of our life as something which is observed and f f kind of quantifies it. And, you know, 500 subscribers, not as good as 600, but better than 400 see, or whatever it is, when actually what matters isn't the number, but the quality, and you can't have a better audience than God and the angels, according to the traditional view of life. So, uh, the way I see it is nothing to do with numbers. Um, if you want a good book on numbers, and read René Guénon, uh, The Signs of the Times, good book. And he's got another one, uh, quantity and quanti quality, quantity, something quantity. I can't remember off the top of my, top of my uh, head. But l if you want a good read, uh, read I think it's either one book or two books combined as one. Genon is G U E N O N, um, Rene. Uh, safely dead. So, you know, he's not, he's not trying to get you know, subscribers or likes or anything. The point of it is, is that. As I said in my last talk, what we do in life echoes in eternity, and that's the way to see it. And trying to trying to help other people isn't the definition of of success. It's a form of selfishness. You know, you're you're in this life to earn the best rewards. It's a form of capitalism, and it's 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 to do with. I mean, if you want to call it that way, um, it's to do with investment and gaining the best rewards. So that's why I'm in it. And I'm not going to stay in what I'm doing right now. I'm just, I've got, you know, a limited amount of things I want to say. And when I've said them, I'm going to stop because I'm interested in me and where I'm going on the Day of Judgment. But I'm not trying to hold on to it. You know, you, you can get as much of it as you want to. This is the great thing about this. There's just so much space here. But it's, there isn't, there's almost no demand. It's, it's like, that's how it works. If you want more information on my thoughts uh, on you know, along this line, then go to samgerens.com and click on books and you can you can download everything that I've written for free. Um, I'm not here to sell you books. You can buy them if you want, but it's not why I do this. And, uh, you know, but, but you have to concentrate, you know. For myself, just quickly, is another uh, Sam Gerens, famous Sam Gerens aside. I don't know about you, but something I've noticed is the internet's becoming almost useless so I bought buy all these books, not just to look clever, um, but but actually because I I want f real food for thought. Now I knew this was going to happen. How how sort of prescient of me, but I did know that the internet was it wasn't for us. They didn't give it to us because they like us or we deserve it. I mean, if you're under thirty, you probably think that the internet just existed forever and it was just there because because you because of you know your feelings, your needs, your your uh, God given right to 5G to be able to download you know, a 14 gigabyte film in five seconds. No, it's, it's there for them, okay? And what you'll find is, is that uh, it's becoming more and more useless. I mean, uh, about 10 or 15 years ago, you could get, uh, it, was, it was the Wild West and you could get all kinds of information. And I downloaded hundreds of gigabytes worth. I've got it all stored on in a separate place. Um, but what I do is buy books because electricity, just one, one flick of a switch, you've got nothing left. And uh, so I buy books and I, I personally, I buy books from 
by dead white guys. And uh, because with the exception of Ayn Rand, who is an exceptional thinker, um, generally, generally speaking, I find that they're I'm slightly dead white guys. I've got Sun Tzu, I've got oh, there's a few, there's a few, but just just go for quality. And a, a quality that has stood the test of time. Not, you know, something that's popular to not fifty shades of grey. Get stuff that's um there's a reason why classics are classics, generally speaking. And uh you know, get them now because they're lots of stuff is going down the memory hole, firstly. And secondly, they are rewriting things. And recently they've done it to or they try to do it to the books of a very famous Roald Dahl. They don't like his they don't like the cut of his jib. Ina Blyton don't like her either now, because what uh, Enid Blyton and Roald Dahl, whose outlook would have been just considered to be mainstream conservative fifty years ago, uh, they're now um, what do they call them? Extreme right or something. They can do it to them. They can do it to you. Doesn't matter what you believe today. There's, you cannot please this system. Can't please it. It, w- it will always find something to fault you on, but what you'll find is that what it always wants, it wants you to live a collectivistic life where uh, morality is just about you mindlessly giving things away to people who don't deserve it. And if you don't want to do that, they'll take it at the point of a gun, and if you don't want to hand it over, they'll call your names and then they'll kill you. See, that's how it works. Anyway, that's enough of that one. I'll link to the article of faith down below. And details of where I upload to, how you can join my Substack and Telegram channel. And I do recommend you do this because you think they're going to leave me on here for a long time. Come on. Um, So if you want to kind of maintain some sort of connection, then that would be the intelligent way to do it. Support my work, which is something you can choose to do. And download my books free are in the description. Thanks for listening and bye for now.